We are definitely at Epcot and we're on a treasure hunt for Rob Kaz's artwork. Done on painted rocks. Yes, and this is what they look like up here. Uh, so yeah, he's hiding them around the park at park opening and giving out hints. So we're here before the park opens. We're gonna try and, you know, get in early, see if we can find them ahead of time. But yeah, we're on a treasure hunt in this video. This is what the entrance looks like as we wait for them to let everybody in. The lines aren't too bad right now. We managed to get here at a good time. It's about 10, 15, 10, 19 in the morning, somewhere around there, and they're letting people in now. We're pretty sure this is the last weekend the Flower and Garden Festival is happening, so it'll be sad to see all these topiaries go away. Most people are heading to rides right about now. Test track. Um, all the other ones, Soren, yeah, Soren, especially Soren. Uh, we're, we're headed straight back to Ross, Rob Cass. It looks like they're letting guests inside, but holding them over here. And I just want to point out these clouds. It's about three days, two or three days until the hurricane hits this area, and it is starting to get cloudy. I'm rocking my whale umbrella we got from Happy Valley Shanghai. If you search our YouTube channel, you can see our trip there. It rained a lot, so this came in handy. Here we go. It has once again started raining. It's going on and off. So I'm glad I have this in front of by the way, it's about 10.30 a.m., so they do open the park 30 minutes early, so, so that's really nice, actually. Everybody is going to Soren, just like this whole crowd, but nope, we're going to around the world to find Rob Cass. These people over here, looks like they're coming in from the World Showcase. So these are all hotel guests. They're coming in from the Sky Basket. Slowly making our way past the Starbucks. There's no line for it this morning. Everybody's just saying, no, we don't need coffee. We need short lines. <laughs> we have noticed that they're offering a lot more passports. Those are passports basically where you can see, you know, what foods you've eaten and there's a little stamp in them. Uh, we, we, when we've been here previously, they didn't like freely offer them up. So they must have printed way too many and they're trying to get rid of them. All right, we made our way to Norway. Sadly, we're skipping Frozen right now. It's probably a five, 10 minute wait. So a very good line. However, we're more interested in a rock. It is so weird seeing hardly anybody in front of us at Epcot. We're definitely weird being the only ones basically over here. Chris was saying a whole bunch of people requested him hide it around Germany or Canada. So we're here now in the German pavilion, the German area, and we're looking just in case he has hidden it and we can get the jump on it. No luck at the moment, so we're just gonna have to wait for him to drop his clues. He's dropping clues on Instagram stories and Facebook. All right, so clue number one for rock number one. Not really a balcony, not entirely a porch, but if you follow the boards around the grill, you will lead to me. And there's a second clue for that same rock, which is past the koi and walk up six times twice, around into the, and there's some sort of Japanese symbol. Water falling behind me, amazing smells next to me, find me beneath the decorative thing people often mistakenly call a pergola. So we think it's somewhere in the Japan pavilion. So we're looking around here. Looking all around here for it. He also did, you know, post certain rules, like he didn't put it inside any buildings. He doesn't want you to disturb anything. You know, he basically just set it out somewhere in the open. Crystal might be onto something. Uh, one of the clues says, water behind me. And you're passing koi fish, apparently. Hmm. I found it! I found it! I found the rock. So over here, in the Japan Pavilion, you could see, here's the pergola, and over, or what I call the pergola, he often says it's not a pergola, but over here, there's the rock! 
We found it! Oh, that's awesome! We found the first Rob Kaz rock! <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this! It's even signed by his name! Oh my gosh! Yeah, that, that was well hidden behind <laughs> there. Ooh! I'm just so glad we found it! I was really worried, you know, we woke up very early for nothing. You know, it was yeah. just not having found any of the rocks, but we found one! We found the first rock, and in my opinion, we found the best rock. Because it's Bo! It's mm -hmm. the main character. I was really hoping that we would find Bo, the frog, or Ollie, the duck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not as big a fan of the ladybug. I don't even know her name, his name. I don't know. See? <laughs> But I love Bo and Ollie. Mm -hmm. So each one of Rob Kaz's uh, creatures from his, uh, n I don't know if it's news line, but one of his lines of artwork it's has- called Friends Along the Way. Friends Along the Way has their own story. And that's pretty cool. I like story-driven things. And story-driven art is pretty cool. So we're on our way now. Rob requested that people who find the rocks go to him so he can let his fans know, his other fans, because we're fans, <laughs> uh, know that you know each rock has been found. So Rob gave us a little bag to hold him in, and I'm glad because we felt like we might damage the paint holding him. Or from when I accidentally dropped it once. <laughs> Literally within the first like 20 seconds, I accidentally dropped it on the ground a little bit. That Sorry, is, Rob. It's just such a Ryan thing to do. Like, it just, it was bound to happen. But I guess it just makes it seem more like an authentic rock. <laughs> I don't know what else to do with my time. I thought this would take literally, you know, two hours trying to find, I thought there'd be like a slow drip of clues, uh, but no, we were just like on it with the clues. We are like, oh, this means this, this means this, and we are on it. All right, so we might as well go over the other clues just so you, you can guess where it's at. Uh, we'll try to do a video of him revealing the locations at the end because we don't know where these are, but let's go over some of the other clues. All right, so here's the clues for rock number two. The monorail takes 15 minutes to travel from the transportation and ticket center to Epcot. Your dinner reservation at Marrakesh, which is exactly one mile from the monorail drop point, is at 6 p.m. If you leave the TTC at 4.42 p.m. and then walk two miles per hour upon arriving at Epcot, how many minutes early will you be for dinner? And the second clue for that rock is one plus two times nine divided by two plus two times five, plus five minus three, plus two plus one, plus four times two. So Crystal was saying how the time reference is like 502 maybe. Um, and then I, I calculated out that math equation and that was I think 24. I don't know what those clues mean though. She corrected herself, 512. All right, so here's the clues for rock number three. Find me near where you also find someone who shares a name with the eighth and furthest known solar planet from our sun. That's Neptune. And then the other clue is, I heard it through the grapevine that where the pink elephants meet the stone wall, you'll find a great place to sit and relax. Maybe a benchmark for happiness. And when you do sit, perhaps if you listen closely, you'll hear the ocean to your right and you'll see me to your left. So just for fun, because we're not too interested in rides right now, we're going to try and find the other two rocks. We're not going to take them, because that's not part of the game. We want other people to enjoy these rocks. But we're just very interested in this, you know, treasure hunt. So I do believe the clues for the next rock could be somewhere in this area. Because I think this is like Neptune or Poseidon, something like that. And so that would share the same name. There it is. I found it. Oh, All right, so we left the rock there. L let me show you it once again. So the rock is just over here. A little duck rock. And the spirit of the game is you're only allowed, you know, one rock. So we're gonna leave it there and we're gonna just see if we can find the second rock, just for fun. I'm just so proud that I knew that this statue was one of the gods and I guessed it right. So because one of the clues mentioned the restaurant Marrakesh, we're heading over this way. See if we can guess the clues over here. All right, we're gonna see if we can decipher what 512 means and 24. At least I think those are the right clues. It'd be bad if we were working off the wrong clues or answers to clues. It's very nice that they have this back area open once again. The shops I do not think are open. 
So sadly, we can't go in them. And I think the restaurant back here is probably not open as well. And then over here, here's the once famous phallic object wall. It is no longer phallic object shape. They put it under construction and they wanted to take out any reference to any phallic object. We're really getting into it, looking around the entrance of Restaurant Marrakesh. Seeing if just for fun we can find this rock. We just had a realization. We actually did the math wrong on, I think, both of those numbers. Uh, it's actually 33 minutes early you would be to your dinner. And you know what else starts with 33? Club 33. Crystal called that. So it's definitely not Marrakesh, it's at Club 33. Waiting for a carriage to pass us by. So yeah, that actually makes sense. There's one in Italy, one in America, and one in Japan, which, you know, are the three areas. He's in America, and then Japan and Italy are right next to him. All right, so we're over here. We're heading to the door of Club 33. I found it. It's over here. That's a hard one to find. All right, we decided to catch that in American Adventure because, you know, why not? We're here, and it's just starting, so it's not a show we often do. It'll be a nice break from the rain. This crystal is very squeaky. All right, it's been a while since we saw that show. I'm glad we did. Moving on. Usually that show is a great place to catch a nap in the hot summer's, you know, sun. But we did it first thing in the morning, so it's like, yeah, we weren't sleepy at all for a change. All right, so we got the half note float. And it's pretty good. Here are the ingredients in it. And it looks really interesting. That float is absolutely amazing. Definitely get it. And it's cheap. It's $6.25. And I feel like it's a very good value for your money. It, it just absolutely fantastic. Okay, next up, we're actually going to go see the Soul of Jazz, an American adventure inside the rotunda. We didn't see it previously, but we saw signs, so we're going to go back in here and check it out. Ah, uh, this is why we didn't see it. So we went off to the right for the American adventure. And it's over here on the left. Let's check it out from left to right. Talks about jazz in Los Angeles. I didn't know Lady Gaga did jazz, but that's pretty cool. And then next up you have New Orleans, which is the birthplace of jazz. Louis Armstrong, Ferdinand Morton, otherwise known as Jelly Roll. And then you have San Juan, the Spanish team. And here is a sign advertising the soul of jazz, an American adventure. Talks about Chicago next and how jazz migrated over there. And lastly, New York City, the jazz capital of the world. And this one has a lot of information on it. And they have some display cases. This is Louis Belson's sheet music. And they got a cornet over here. More sheet music and drums. Over here they have some tiny miniatures of the characters from Soul. And then lastly some more jazz sheet music and a trumpet as well. I'm glad we did that because I'm not sure how permanent that's going to be there. Because, you know, things are always changing here at Epcot. We're slowly making our way out of Epcot. It's still raining. Crowns aren't too heavy right now for the 4th of July weekend. There's a duck up ahead with her little kid. It's not a full-on baby duck, but it's pretty tiny. There it is. Ah, uh, they're getting in line. They're entering there. <laughs> they want some margaritas. <laughs> I wonder what type of margarita they're going to get. Yeah, there's still a line over there. Oh, they're cutting the line. Those ducks are not good people. They just cut the line. We're gonna stop by the Port of Entry to see if they have any last minute deals on any festival merch. Oh, okay, so they have a rain jacket, but we weren't a fan of this rain jacket. It just didn't seem that great in my opinion yeah I don't like that line there and 
Yeah. yeah. Some cups over here, t-shirts. They got a whole bunch of the trash cans still. Hats. A journal. Kitchen. No, these are bags. These aren't kitchen towels. These are just bags that they got. They got glasses. A magic band over here. And I think this is a utensil kit. Yeah, this is definitely a utensil kit, I think. And then they also have this section over here. Some big jars. And a lot of more cups. Here's some more of the merchandise that they have. You even got this boot. A lot of cups over here. I guess the mini cups did not sell well. Because I think they had these cups in like other characters as well, like Figment and Spike the B, and those might have sold out, but not many. They also have some 4th of July merchandise over here. Some ears, jackets, t-shirts, and even Crocs. We stopped to do Figment, and they have the Touch Lab open. That's really cool. They got all this working again. Maybe not that one TV, but this TV's working. Ooh. That's exciting. I wonder how, when they'll have this character meet and greet with Ralph back. They got one for Imagination Land here. By the way, here's a little bit of up update on the construction. So they're still working on that far building. And then this building, well, the remnants of what was the building, is completely gone in front of us. And they're giving away more go-go squeeze over here, so of course we're gonna grab one. We got an apple go-go squeeze. And these are pretty good. They're nice and cold. They're like a good little refreshing drink slash snack and they're free. Checking out the butterfly exhibit one last time before it goes away. Definitely flying about here is butterflies. Look at all these butterflies here. They're just not flying around. They don't appreciate the rain. I do wonder what Disney does with all these plants once the festival ends. I'd love to take some of them home, especially the strawberry or other vegetable or fruit plants home, because we are trying to grow a garden in our backyard with lots of fruits and stuff. Banana tree over here. All right, now I think we're for sure heading out of the park. All right, we're done at the park. We had a good day. We found all three of the rocks. We only took one of them, uh, his Instagram, Thing can confirm it. You know, other people did find the other two rocks. We were there when another person found um, Ollie. Ollie. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the duck. But uh, that was, that part was fun. I hope Rob Cass does that again. If you haven't seen his art, go. There's a link in the description. Check out his art. I love those little creatures. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Uh, and yeah, we just had a good day. We didn't really do any rides. We did Figment, but that was it. But yeah. even then, it was fun. It was nice, especially considering that it's a holiday weekend and expecting it to be super crowded. So I'm actually really thankful for this light rain that I think is keeping some people inside. Mm -hmm. And also, like, the hurricane might also be keeping people away. They're just like, ah, let's cancel the travel <laughs> plan. Let's not go there. There's a hurricane coming. But uh, yeah, that's it for today. See ya. Bye.